particular cell type. Uh, we do the same thing. We associate a particular uh, axonal arbor that belongs to a dendritic cell type into this 3D, um, into the 3D Cartesian system, and then uh, sort of clone these uh, reconstructions from one column to two columns, finally to the whole uh, bristle cortex. So we have a, a complete reconstruction of the bristle cortex is an area of about three millimeters to by uh, four millimeters using measured soma distances and extrapolating the dendrites and the axons from a restricted number of reconstruction that you have made. You just have to add that to in order to do a, a reconstruction take, took about four weeks. We are down to about two to three days now. Still, this is uh, the bottleneck in reconstructing cortical areas or the cortex. Now, how is a sensory stimulus represented in layer two? And I'm going to concentrate into, uh, onto layer two, and I will show you how, how it is uh, uh, represented at columnar resolution. That is, I'll show you how uh, many columns and which part of the columns are um, involved. And in the second part, I'll show you recent work that I did with Arthur Connard on synaptic resolution. So we can look at the representation of a stimulus at synapse re uh, resolution. The first uh, thing uh, you want to know uh, is how is a uh, sensory stimulus represented by, uh, and there are uh, several methods. One of them is to impregnate the upper part, layer two, with a voltage sensitive dye that has been developed by Amir Grin Grinwald and Rina Hildesheim. Uh, this dye changes its uh, uh, emission, fluorescence emission, upon a change in, in fluorescence, uh, uh, upon, uh, upon, uh, a change in uh, voltage. And we have been using this uh, voltage sensitive dye to impregnate the upper part uh, of the vibrissal area. This is shown for six uh, columns. And um, did the following experiment. Here you see a, uh, this is done in vivo, obviously. Uh, here you see a view onto the vibrissal cortex. In white, you see the outlines of the individual columns. And we are deflecting the D2 column and watch the change in fluorescence uh, as a function of time. And we want to know how is a single stimulus represented uh, in layer two using this um, method, which, as I will show, is represents mostly post-synaptic potentials. So we are looking at a PSP map or an input map into layer two. We are not looking at the output map. We are looking at the input map due to the uh, fluorescence changes that are created by voltage sensitive, uh, by uh, changes in voltage. An action potential is far too short, cannot be reported by this. Um, so what I want, would like to uh, show you is that there is, uh, as I said in the beginning, not a map. The map is time dependent. So after 16 milliseconds, the excitation of a whisk, uh, induced by a whisker deflection is restricted to a single column. After 26 milliseconds, it is, uh, has spread into the first ring of surround columns. And after 50 milliseconds, half of the vibrissal area is, um, is uh, activated. So again, there is not a map. The map has to be defined not only by its input signals, but also by its time. Now, since we were not quite sure what the voltage sensitive dye um, uh, reports, we did in parallel experiments by looking at the uh, postsynaptic potentials, established these uh, input maps, P PSP maps, and you can see there's a rather similar, uh, uh, they have a rather similar structure to what you see in the voltage sensitive dye. After 10 milliseconds, you see the first EPSPs appearing, which then spread within the next milliseconds to almost over the whole uh, uh, bristle cortex. So um, this is uh, a description of the input in layer two as reported by the PSPs. And what, what we want to know is what's behind that. 
what, is, what are uh, the synapses or the contributors or the, the, the cells in the cortex that generate this map. And uh, to do this, you first have to uh, look at the innovation of, lay of layer two. And this is done in the following way, using uh, um, uh, uh, an annotated connection map, we want to first measure the cells in a sending layer, for example, layer 5B or layer 4, measure the number of receiving cells. Then we want to determine the number of synapses by, uh, per, uh, per cell, and we also want to know the synapse location. This is done not only for the projections within a column, but also from the outside column, from the first surround column. So this is what you call an annotated connection map if we want to understand the representation of the sensory stimulus in layer two or in any layer, you have to first establish the anatomy in a quantitative manner, otherwise it will, uh, you, you will not succeed in explaining this, uh, these maps. Now, how did we do that? We used uh, our reconstructed uh, connectome of the vibrissal cortex and then asked how are layer two, how are the dendrites of layer two cells innervated by the axons, for example, by layer two uh, uh, axons, layer three axons, layer four axons, and so on, layer four axons again uh, for, for comparison, layer five, uh, uh, B axons and layer 5A axons. So what you do is one uh, convolves the the, uh, these, uh, these um, um, distributions of dendrites and axons are uh, transferred into densities in this Cartesian system and we use what's called Peter's rule to determine the synapse density which simply means in a voxel of about 30 micrometer uh, uh, size, one measures the length of the dendrite and the length of the uh, axon, multiplies them, and gets a uh, probability of innovation, which then is uh, which which then is transformed into real synapses by looking at the density of boutons and uh, 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 dendrites. So, using this, one can establish innovation volumes. These innovation volumes are very difficult to visualize. So what, uh, in a further step, what we do is we uh, uh, concaten or uh, uh, produce out of these uh, um, innovation volumes 1D density profiles. And this is easier to understand. So what you he see here is the density profile of, a dendrite, uh, of, the, den of the dendrites in layer two. Um, and they are uh, compared to the innovation um, uh, to, to the axon uh, densities of the si uh, different cell types that, uh, that uh, project into layer two. Now, um, what you can see here is that there is one major layer, this is layer four, projects much stronger into, uh, into layer two than the other layers, but the important point is all of the layers project to different degrees into layer two, implicating that uh, layer two is innovated not by just layer four, but it's innovated by at least four, possibly five different layers. If you want to understand the uh, representation, there is no way that this can be done in the conventional way by looking at a sequential scheme. As you will see, one has to take into account the innovation of a particular layer by the other layers. Now, um, what we have uh, used this data, or uh, we, have, we have further reduced this data into uh, an annotated connection map, and you show, and I show this uh, as an example for the innovation of layer, of layer two by layer four. There are 2,749 cells in layer two. They project to 935 cells in layer, uh, in layer four, project to 900, uh, 935 cells in layer two, and they form 1,343 synapses. This is what we derive from our somatic maps, from the maps of dendrites, and from the axons using this Peters rule. Now, uh, you can see also 
that layer four not only projects within the column, but it also projects outside the column, but a very much lower density. So per cell, uh, only 68 uh, synapses are established in the neighboring cell compared to 1,343 in the principal disk. Now, uh, from this um, data, we generate um, what's called an uh, anatomical input matrix. That is, we uh, look at the, uh, distri at the distribution of synapses formed by, by uh, layer four in uh, different uh, columns of layer two. And uh, with this um, input matrix, we have a, a quantitative description of the innovation density of one layer to the other layers within a single column, within, uh, within the principal uh, column, and, uh, with all, uh, and in the surround columns. So what you see from this is a 3D representation of, of something very simple. It's called a matrix. The matrix has different entries. This is a three by three matrix. The entries that you, that you have are the uh, calculated uh, uh, synapses uh, in the principal whisker and in the surround whisker. The same thing um, is shown here for innovation of layer two by layer five cells, a very different picture. 1,700 cells uh, project to 935 cells. They form uh, 362 uh, synapses per cell in the principal whisker and only 37 in the surrounding whisker. Now again, this is put into a uh, into a connectivity matrix or an anatomical, Im uh, anatomical uh, innovation matrix. And then we use uh, the measured output maps, which you also can notate in a, in a, in a, in a matrix, to uh, calculate how many uh, of these available synapses are actually activated. That is, we compare the matrix of innovation with the matrix of um, uh, action potential f uh, of action potentials that are occurring within a, a certain time, we just multiply them, and this gives us a distribution of the active synapses. So we are moving from anatomically possible uh, synapses to or anatomical synapses to actually active synapses. This is uh, shown here. This is uh, the, I, I talked about this, a 3D histogram of activity uh, of a layer four cell. This is shown in, in, in two, 2D or in, in the profile. Now we convolve the anatomical matri matrix with this um, AP output matrix to give us the number of uh, uh, active synapses. Same is done, done for layer 5B, exactly the same way. And you can already see that the uh, this network will be activated very differently because the output activity of layer four is very different from the output acti activity of layer five. Now, doing this, we arrive to the uh, following numbers, that upon a single whisker deflection, uh, layer four activates about 330 synapses per cell. Um, the assumption that is, um, that, uh, that, that, that uh, uh, that we have to make to arrive at that number is to first use the uh, anatomical map. We show, so I showed you how to do this. This is the measured uh, action potential probability in a particular um, uh, column. And in addition, we assume a efficiency of release from uh, a bouton of 0.6. This is derived from data which uh, Feldman I, uh, I did uh, some 10 years ago where we looked at the slice at the average uh, um, release probability of uh, uh, glutamate from a, uh, s from, a, from a bouton when a single action potential is generated. So using these uh, three figures, we arrive at 360 active synapses per cell that, is, that are activated when a single whisker is deflected. They are activated by layer four. If we do the same um, calculation for the layer five input, we arrive at 332 um, synapses, uh, but there is one major difference, na namely 
Um, these 332 are um, generated by uh, connections within a, a principal column and, uh, with, uh, and by the connections from the first surround column. The reason is, shown in this, maybe you remember that, upon a single whisker deflection, layer five, the layer five B cells not, uh, are not only activated in the principal column, but also in the surround columns. So um, using this, we have now, uh, what we, and we have done this for the other layers, the major conclusion from this is that when a whisker is deflected and one looks at the input map in layer two or the output map, what you see is a combination of the activity pr predominantly of layer five and of layer four. There is no sequential scheme layer uh, VPM uh, activating layer four, layer four, layer, uh, layer uh, two. What one has to take into account is that whatever we see as an input map on the top of the cortex in layer two is uh, a combination of the activity from the underlying, uh, from the underlying uh, layers with different uh, contributions from the principal whisker and from the uh, surround whisker column. Now this is all very nice, um, but uh, it's a, a sort of speculative. Now I had the chance to collaborate with a, a, in Arthur Connors' lab with two young uh, uh, researchers. One is uh, Susanna Varga from Hungary and Hong Bo uh, from uh, actually from uh, he's from China, um, and they uh, did or we did an experiment that is illustrated here. We can uh, now directly measure the predictions that are made on the distribution of synapses in a layer two cell by directly looking at uh, what's called the hotspots in the, de in the dendritic arb of a single, a single uh, 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 layer two cell. If our hypothesis is right that the um, activation of a layer two cells, uh, two cell is determined by the sum of different inputs from different layers, we would expect what we call, would call uh, shared inputs. And this is what, what you actually see. Now, first the experiment, this is a rendering of a, a dendrite or part of a dendrite of a, of a, of a five micrometer thick uh, optical slice. What you see here is the shadow of a patch by bed. It has been filled with uh, a calcium sensitive uh, dye. And what you see uh, is what, what happens when we deflect a single whisker. This will happen here and here. And what you see is the activation of different uh, synapses uh, when a single whisker is deflected, in this case five times. So what we, we can do now, we can look at the distribution uh, of synapses on the dendritic arbor of a layer two cell, and we, con con and we can compare this to the predictions